Hi, this is Julia, and here is the news for you. A group of volunteers from Malaysia collected food to combat Ramadan food waste. A group of volunteers from Malaysia is looking to combat food waste and reduce hunger during the holy month of Ramadan by collecting leftover food from the food bazaars and giving it to the needy. Volunteers from the GEMA, a local non-profit organization, visited 50 Ramadan bazaars across the country with the cooperation of food sellers to gather the leftover food. They collected over 20,000 kilograms of leftover food from 55 bazaars in Kuala Lumpur three weeks into the fasting month. Volunteer Uma Kalatun Abdul Ghani told Reuters, once collected the food, will be weighed and repacked before being distributed. According to the Malaysia Solid Waste and Public Cleansing Management Corporation, during Ramadan last year, a staggering 252,521 tons of solid waste was collected with 44.5% of it, around 112,000 tons, being food waste. We will inform the bazaar vendors in advance about this project. And if there are any unsold surplus food items, they can give them to us. We'll collect or have them sent to our booth, and our volunteers will also assist. On the day of collection, we will weigh the food items as per the standard operating procedure for record keeping. After weighing, we will divide, repackage, and then distribute them to those in need. Bungkus balik semua tu, dan kita berikan kepada yang memerlukan. The Solid Waste and Public Cleansing Management Corporation estimates that this year, if no action is taken, there could be an additional 75,000 tons of food waste generated in Malaysia during Ramadan. This projection is based on an expected 15% increase in waste generation during the holy month, which could result in approximately 19,228 tons of food waste being generated daily throughout the country. The initiative that has started in 2016 was welcomed by locals. Indonesian military looking for missing soldiers in Papua after exchange with rebels. Indonesia's military chief said four soldiers were missing following an exchange of fire with separatist rebels in the restive region of Papua as they attempted to rescue an abducted New Zealand pilot. Up until now, there are five military personnel who have been shot and evacuated to Timika. I have seen for myself that they are all in good condition. Also, there are four people who have not been accounted for, four people with unconfirmed status. Perhaps in a situation like that, they run and hid, but we will deploy a search and rescue team. In the future, with such ceasefire operations in high-risk areas, we will increase our operations from the usual protocol if there are civilians. If there aren't any civilians and we know that the area is the hideout of a rebel group, we will execute the combat alert. Euro said visit to the region that five others were injured in the shootout, but were otherwise in good condition, the military is ready to step up operation without elaborating details. Susi Air pilot Philip Merton's abduction by the West Papua National Liberation Army in February set off a renewed strife between the rebels and Indonesia's security forces. In a shootout last weekend during an operation to rescue Mertens, the rebel group said they had killed 15 soldiers after Jakarta did not respond to their request for a negotiation. The claim was denied by the military chief. Hundreds of Muslims gathered at a port in northern Jakarta to celebrate Eid prayers. Hundreds of Muslims gathered at a port in northern Jakarta for morning prayers as the world's most populous Muslim country ushered in the Idul Fidr festival. Worshippers prayed at the historical Dutch port of Sunda Kalapa, many feeling relieved because they were able to celebrate freely with their loved ones after the pandemic. Regarding it prayers, I'm very happy we're free of COVID restriction now. It's both happy and somber for me. Another worshipper, Adit Chandra, said he is planning to travel to his hometown this holiday season. I hope it gets better from here on and that we can gather together with our families after the last three years of not being able to go back to our hometown. We're planning on going after it. 
Eid al-Fitr, the biggest Muslim festival, marks the end of the holy fasting month of Ramadan. Many Indonesian Muslims celebrate the day by attending the morning prayers and visiting cemeteries and homes of their relatives. <laughs> Thailand's heat index over 54 degrees Celsius. As residents find ways to cope with Thailand's extreme heat over the past few weeks, the country recorded its highest ever heat index of 54 degrees Celsius, a measure of what the temperature feels like to the human body. <laughs> It feels like this year is hotter than every year. We have to cope with it. What can we do with the heat? It also because the number of cars, this road has a lot of trucks passing by. According to the Thai Meteorological Department, Thailand's actual temperature ranged between 38 to 42 degrees on Saturday, with the highest heat index experienced in Bangkok's Bangna district, located in the eastern part of the capital. So residents have been advised to avoid outdoor activities and avoid sudden changes of temperature, like drinking cold water instantly after exercising, also wear thin clothing. According to the Thailand's weather agency said, Thailand issued an extreme heat warning in Bangkok, people to be wary of the possibility of heat stroke due to the hot weather. The heat is expected to continue for the next seven days. Philippines and China set up more lines of communication to resolve maritime issues. Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. met Chinese Foreign Minister Xin Gang with Manila and Beijing pledging to work together to resolve their maritime differences in the South China Sea. Talks between the country's key officials in Manila marked the latest in a series of high-level meetings of the Philippines with leaders of the United States and China as a two-superpower battle for strategic advantage in the Indo-Pacific. Marcos said, as to the conflicts, we agreed to establish more lines of communication so that any event that occurs in the West Philippine Sea that involves China and Philippines can immediately be resolved. Chin said the two countries needed to work together to continue a traditional friendship, Deep in cooperation and properly resolved differences, working together will help promote peace and stability of the region and the world. People in Indonesia gathered in Papua province to observe a rare hybrid solar eclipse. People in Indonesia's Papua gathered to observe a rare hybrid solar eclipse on Thursday. The total eclipse was only visible in East Indonesia, a few parts of Australia and Timor-Leste. A partial eclipse was visible across all the countries and parts of the Southeast Asia. This is very special because this eclipse doesn't occur every day. It only occurs in the month or at certain times, so we want to see that event. In Jayapura, the capital of Papua province, where moon crossed the sun at 20 past 12 local time, 3.20 GMT, plunging viewers into darkness and dropping the temperature. Thursday's eclipse was a rare hybrid type not seen worldwide since 2013. In a hybrid eclipse, depending on where viewers stand and the moon either bloats out the sun, a total eclipse or obscures the center while leaving a ring of light visible in annular eclipse. Local enthusiasts from around Indonesia came to Jayapura to witness the rare moment of hybrid solar eclipse. In Jakarta, the light dimmed and the sun took on the appearance of the crescent, according to photos shared on social media. Thank you so much everyone. Have a lovely day. Stay safe and stay healthy.